Well, in today's parting shots, an almost 3,000 meter volcano spewing ash into the air. Imagine sitting at home one minute, then finding yourself rushing to safety, hiding in makeshift tents in fear of suffocating from the ash, or worse, getting caught up in the lava. A terrifying experience for tens of thousands in Bali right now. Well, our next guest is not a stranger to the geologic chaos in the Indonesian island, nor the astounding photos resulting from it. He's a photographer, a writer and volunteer for evacuees there. Rio Helmi joins me now. Rio, just give us a sense of the situation you're seeing right now on the ground, given that tens of thousands of people have been evacuated. Well, actually, they, the initial evacuation happened a couple of months ago, and then there was some confusion about it, and then people were allowed to go back and they've been moved out again. So in the meantime, it's not as frantic as it was. It's still, there's still a little bit of, uh, you know, chaos. Uh, there's a, a little bit of misunderstanding, but the situation is much better than it was two months ago. So you have tens of thousands of people, yes, going out, um, out of zones. There, there are some uh, zones in there which are extremely dangerous. The, uh, the pyroclastic flows could happen. They haven't happened yet. What we're seeing at the moment is what we call, uh, it's a magmatic eruption, but it is a, an effusive eruption. It's not explosive. It's not going up into the air uh, as it will probably eventually. So at the moment, there's a still uh, somewhat um, subdued compared to what it could be. It's, I mean, it's big. It's, we have 3,800 meters of uh, smoke of volcanic clouds going up. There are, uh, there is ash falling over the place around in the, in the zones. Also, the winds are carrying the ash quite a ways away. Sometimes uh, the winds are blowing towards the east. We've had reports of the ash going as far as Lombok. Uh, there is a little bit of fine ash falling around the western and uh, southwestern areas. So the airport has been closed down. And as a photographer, you get up close to the activity. Uh, we know from our meteorologists that there's expected to be an imminent massive eruption soon. Where do you expect to be when that happens and how dangerous could it be? Well, I'm hoping that I'll be somewhere where I can get close enough, but also I don't really want to be, you know, <laughs> terminated in that either. So. <laughs> but it is, it is some, there are different zones. So if I'm within, you know, say nine, 10 kilometers, that's, you know, that's fair enough. You know, that's close enough. But I could be closer because of my, me, my volunteer work. I don't know really exactly where I'll be. And it's not just the lava and the torrents of mud, but the ash cloud is, is quite dangerous, right? Yes, well, the ashes, the ash is made of a very fine, it's very fine mineral. It's, uh, they looked at it under the microscope, it's very sharp edge. So it's dangerous for, the, for your breathing, it's dangerous for your eyes. You know, people need to be wearing masks, uh, maskers, and also we need to be wearing some sort of goggles or some sort of covering of the eyes because it is, it is extremely dangerous. So what does it mean to be a photographer amidst a volcanic eruption? Well, you know, it's um, my colleagues and I, you know, it's, it's shifting sands. You know, you, you start uh, the day on one thing and then suddenly something else is happening. It's not like, it's not a scheduled, you know, perfect uh, orderly thing. You know, the, the, the winds change, the, the mountain uh, is, is unpredictable. It's what we call a, a closed system volcano. It's one of 58 volcanoes in the world that has hit a volcanic uh, explosivity index of five. It's one of seven that's done that consecutively. And uh, we don't really, we can't tell exactly how it's going to go. It's the first time that they've, uh, they've, they've actually measured it with instruments. Uh, before in 63, there were no instruments in place. So we, we don't really exactly know what will happen next. So it's, you know, every day brings something new. So you also work as a volunteer, an evacuation volunteer. Are there any people refusing to leave the evacuation zone? There are some. Yeah, there are some, but I, I think, you know, with this latest, uh, what we call, you know, it started off as a phreatic, uh, what you call a phreatic eruption about uh, a week ago, which is mainly because of the water in the thermal, hydrothermal systems. And now we're seeing, you know, the last couple of days, we're seeing for the first time magmatic, you know, where you see the actual, you know, the, the, the magmatic material coming out. And I think a lot of people have changed their minds, but there's still some people, there are still some people who are, waiting and i'm not sure how long they will wait because some of them say in 1963 nothing happened to them so the, it's difficult well, you know you're, you're with this kind of belief 
Yeah, but we do know that obviously that 1963 volcanic eruption was deadly and it lasted almost a year. So it looks like people are building some permanent structures uh, to evacuate into right now. Just give us a sense of what your work involves as an evacuation volunteer and the needs of the people there. Well, what I, my particular job is because I'm very mobile. My particular job is to to check and monitor what's happening. There's a team of uh, very dedicated volunteers who work with me, and they're actually the people who spend a lot of time, you know, with each individual group or sp uh, spend time, you know, bringing people down. I monitor. I check the evacuation routes. Uh, I try to check what's happening with the evacuees, and uh, you know, but there's a lot of camps. There's hundreds of camps, and some of them are registered. Some of them aren't. Um, there, you know, it, it's it's uh, it can be a good thing that they're they're in 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 more self what we call self reliant village you know camps because that way they're they're not as uh, alienated they're not as you know they're not sitting in a camp like getting depressed they're, they're actually involved in village life uh, so those those situations are, are better there, are, there have been other situations where in bigger camps where people are getting really depressed because they're just sitting there. And they have nothing to do, and there's no engagement. The first couple right. of days, it doesn't you don't feel it, but after that, you feel it, you know. All right, Rio Helmi, really good to get your perspective on all of this. Uh, we wish you the best in your work um, over the coming days and weeks, and we will stay on this story. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Bye. Well, I'm Linda Kincaid. That was Connect the World from our team here in Atlanta and in Abu Dhabi and London. Thanks so much for watching and joining us today. The news continues right here on CNN. The International Desk is up next with my colleague Robin Kono. Until then, we leave you with the image of the day, a royal romance and the wedding fever it has sparked.